Hello Space Cats and welcome back to my channel. This week has been an absolute scorcher and while some of us have been celebrating the hot weather, <coughs> BBC, others have been struggling to stay alive in this heat wave. Given all the evidence, can we really turn a blind eye to climate change? In this week's video, I'm going to be talking about climate change and space. The Earth's atmosphere is a layer of gas that surrounds the Earth. It acts like a shield, protecting us from harmful UV radiation, and it maintains our pressure so that liquid water can exist on the surface. The Sun's radiation enters the Earth and reflects off the Earth's surface, and the atmosphere acts to redistribute this solar energy. It does this by allowing some of this radiation to be reflected back into space, whilst keeping the rest of it to maintain and regularize the temperature on the Earth. Human activity damages our atmosphere, and this in turn leads to global warming. Greenhouse gases include carbon dioxide, methane, also known as cow farts, yuck, um, nitrous oxide, aka laughing gas, and chlorofluorocarbons, which are man-made chemicals typically found in aerosol cans. The most prevalent and surprising greenhouse gas is, however, water vapor. Burning of fossil fuels, such as driving cars and taking airplanes, will emit these greenhouse gases that pollute the air. These greenhouse gases are bad for the environment because solar radiation reflecting off the earth will be absorbed by these gases and then they're re-emitted in all different directions which can overheat the planet. This is also known as the greenhouse effect and some of these greenhouse gases also deplete the ozone layer within our atmosphere. Scientific evidence for the warming of our climate is unequivocal. Ice cores extracted from Antarctica show that the Earth's climate responds to the level of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. And we also see this in the ocean sediments, in tree rings and in our coral reefs. There are also vital signs that climate change is happening. For example, the global temperature in the last century has increased by one degree Celsius. Our sea levels have risen by eight inches, which is double that of the previous century. Our glaciers are disappearing. There's been a huge increase in extreme rainfall events, and our oceans have been poisoned by high level concentrations of carbon dioxide. Space launches undoubtedly leave a large carbon footprint. Rockets which launch on solid propellant fuels will release huge amounts of CO2, but also particles such as reflective alumina and soot, which pollute our atmosphere. However, these days, most rockets launch with liquid propellants, which are much more environmentally friendly. For example, NASA's Space Shuttle releases 28 US tons of CO2 per launch, and that's equivalent to a 50-minute flight on a Boeing 747 plane. Given that rocket launches are fairly infrequent, this means that the carbon footprint of space is negligible in comparison to aviation. Without space, it's likely that we wouldn't even know that climate change is happening. Lack of monitoring stations across remote areas and across the oceans means that satellites are the only way that we can gather data on essential climate variables. There are currently 54 of these essential climate variables, and these include CO2 and water vapor levels. By gathering this data, we can track and predict changes to our climate. Weather satellites allow us to monitor our environment. Here, you can see a heat wave across Europe on June the 26th, in comparison to the heat wave that occurred on the 25th of July. Both events saw record-breaking temperatures. 
but this data was collected by ESA's Copernicus Sentinel-3 satellite. In short, space allows us to gather data with global coverage, with uniform and regular intervals that allow us to make critical assessments on changes to our climate. We are so fortunate that Earth is a perfect greenhouse, but global warming could easily change that. To understand what could happen as a result of our actions, we can take a look at our nearest neighbors. Mars is a planet with a very thin atmosphere and almost no greenhouse effect. There, the pressure is extremely low and the surface is largely frozen no life exists there. Venus, on the other hand, has a runaway greenhouse effect. This means it has so much greenhouse gases that it can't thermally radiate and cool down. Venus is extremely hot, 460 degrees Celsius, because it has 150,000 times more carbon dioxide than Earth does. Any water on Venus's surface will have boiled away. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. I hope I've managed to convince you that climate change is to blame for this month's heat wave. And unless we make a change now, things are only going to get worse. Let me know in the comments section below what you're going to do for the environment. And as usual, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, share and subscribe.